Well, hi, I'm Shane and welcome to Lori Farm. Today we're going to be doing some work on this old tractor uh, in preparation for winter. Uh, the last thing I want to do when we get to winter is be dealing with uh, small maintenance things that I could have easily gotten done here this fall. So today we're going to uh, change the spark plug wires out. We're also going to put in some new spark plugs uh, while we're doing that. I've already gotten the hood off. Uh, I had Sarah come out this morning and help me take it off. That's one thing I do recommend uh, to take these old hoods off is, is get some help. Came out and drained the fuel out last night uh, to make it a little bit lighter. You can see how the spark plug wires are, are ran here. They, uh, they feed into this little tube, um, basically just the wiring all nice and tight together. And then they feed down. Now on this particular tractor, uh, being that it's a 1949, it actually has the front mount distributor so everything's kind of tucked in there and really hard to work on. The later models, they changed that to a side mount. What a genius idea that was to make it a little bit easier. So I ended up getting these spark plug wires from O'Reilly. It's kind of a universal kit. Comes with all of the, the fittings and the boots and everything that you need uh, to get everything set up. And I think these should be cut in different lengths. But if not, we're going to custom cut them to every length that we want. So I'm going to start by just removing these old spark plugs. And I'm actually going to pull the plugs out of the boots. Um, it's going to be a little bit easier to, uh, to get everything fished back through there. Now you can remove this tube and, uh, and take it off the tractor. But I'd rather not because the way that it's connected is actually through these head bolts. So I'd rather not loosen those unless I absolutely have to. You can see on this one, it slipped right out of the right out of the sleeve. I've actually had to repair it a couple of times this summer, and this is mainly one of the reasons that I'm doing this here going into winter. It's, I know these wires are are getting old and and are ready to be switched out. So I'll probably save the old stuff. That's kind of how I do things. I have a whole garage of saved old stuff. I got these wires uh, tied off to the shroud here. Uh, that way they don't get into the belt. Um, when I converted to the uh, 12 volt um, alternator system instead of the six volt generator system, the belt runs really close in here. So I wanted to make sure that those were pinned back and didn't get into that belt, which looking at this belt, I probably should consider changing that pretty soon too. Now keeping track of which wire goes to which wire, I actually have all my wires marked uh, with some tape there, as you can see. But another way to do it is there's plenty of schematics on Google that you can look up if you uh, accidentally pull a wire out and can't remember exactly where it goes back. So, so that's nice. So with the new wire set up, uh, it looks like it came with uh, two wires that were long and three wires that are shorter. So I, uh, like I said, I'm gonna be custom cutting them. So basically what I'm going to do here is I just got a little bit of, of duct tape on there that I put onto the wire just to help fish this thing through. And uh, I'm just going to pull on the, uh, the other end to kind of help get it through this tube and uh, fish each one of them in there. Should assist it a little bit better and uh, make the job a little bit easier. Those will help if I remove that. And typically for this, I'd use electrical tape, but like I said, I like to save every old part that I possibly have, so the garage is pretty full of junk, which means that it's impossible to find a roll of electrical tape right now. That's okay. One of the coolest things about having an old tractor like this is that I'm actually surprised how incredibly easy it is to work on. I've never really been all that great with working on cars or anything like that, but... In the years that I've had this tractor, I've found it's incredibly simple. Also, being that it's basically the most common tractor probably in the world as far as uh, sales ever, um, there's a lot of information online. You can find a lot of good stuff, and there's a lot of good forums and Facebook groups and all sorts of guys that know way more about this stuff than I do that... Uh, can provide some pretty good answers for you. Start working on installing the boots. 
that slit in that guy. There we go. Well, we got all four of the boots mounted on here. So I think what I'm going to do at this point is uh, I'm going to change out the spark plugs right now and get those fastened on there. And then I'll start buttoning down everything over here on the distributor. The spark plugs that I'm going to be putting in here are Autolite 216s. This was actually something that I did quite a bit of uh, research on, believe it or not. First couple of years I had the tractor, I was having a lot of problems with starting, and I couldn't figure out if it was carburetor or, or a weak spark or something like that. So what I ended up doing was I, I started watching a bunch of YouTube videos, and I came across a video of a guy and he had charts and graphs and all sorts of stuff. And um, what's basically recommended is Autolite 237s. And I was trying to run those and I was just having all these starting issues and I came across it and, and he was suggesting to use the Autolite 216s, um, mainly for our colder climate here. Um, so I switched to those and, and honestly, I haven't had hardly any problem with starting ever since. So I'm gonna stick with these 216s and uh, and, you know, if you're looking for answers out there, I'd suggest giving them a try. We'll put a little connector grease on top of some of these, too. That way uh, we can cut down on the corrosion and should also have it have a pretty good connection. There we go. Yeah, I sure like working on these old tractors, that's for sure. And uh, it's amazing how much I've learned over the past five years just having to deal with this or that or... The other, for the most part, everything's ran pretty good, but there's been times where I've had to do uh, some work on the carburetor or different things like that. And I think at some point I probably would be interested in doing a full restore, but sure would be nice to have another tractor. See what my wife thinks about that. You can see there, I. <clears throat> I did the splice on there. I got the boot already on the wire. I'll get this little clip put on here. Wire shoved through. And you can see here, the wire goes on the back side of that so that you got a real good connection. We'll crimp her down. Well, there's probably enough fuel in the uh, carburetor to see if she'll at least turn over and if we got her, got her working. Sounds good to me. Well, we got it all put back together with uh, new plugs and new wires, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna take her out for a spin. Make sure everything's working good. Just got her fueled up after getting the hood back on. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys. Uh, like we were talking about, we're setting up for winter, so I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna get the back blade, and I'm gonna show you a little adjustment that I made on that back blade in order to handle our gravel driveway and not have it just dig the driveway up all winter long. So that'll be kind of cool. As you can see, the blade on this back blade is pretty sharp. So if you're out on the gravel driveway, it just wants to dig up everything. So I ended up making a piece that uh, basically mounts to the bottom. It's just this long pipe, and it kind of floats across the top of the gravel and doesn't dig any of it up. So get that installed. Well, I appreciate you hanging out today with me and uh, hopefully we learned something. And uh, if you want to check out this next video, uh, we'll see you next time.